Thank you. My name is Lizzie Gardner, and uh, can you all hear me okay? Five foot one, so I'm just bearing right down. And is this one foot one? Yeah. So I'm from the Preservation Council in BC, and uh, I'll be talking to you about a guide that we produced uh, last year. We've been shopping that around to Basin uh, this last year. Um, I just have to shout out to our sponsors very briefly. Um, so I'll just talk a bit about the Fraser Basin Council and what we do, um, an overview of the guide, and uh, then I'll go into some highlights of the workshops that we've, um, what we've heard and some of the challenges of, of watershed issues that we've, that we've seen in the province over the last year. Um, some highlights and lessons learned, and then some current watershed projects that we're working on right now. So the Fraser Basin Council is a non-profit organization um, mandated to advance sustainability in the basin. Um, with, a, with a focus on the basin, but we do uh, deal with issues in BC as a whole. Um, our primary roles include educator, convener, and facilitator. Um, and we're, we're guided by a collaborative board uh, from all levels of government, uh, the private sector, and civil society. And our mandate, or our, our vision that supports our work and guides our work, is uh, social well-being supported by a vibrant economy and sustained by a healthy environment. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Doesn't do that at home. <laughs> there we go. There's a map of the basin. Um, so it's, uh, the river itself is about almost 1,400 kilometers long. It drains uh, 220,000 kilometers of, of area. And over two-thirds of the population live in the basin. So it's quite a large area. Um, and it has quite a different, uh, a number of different issues um, and, and differences in um, integrating this, this basin is quite difficult. Um, for instance, um, you get Kamloops right around here and they, they deal with a lot of, and the Nicola Valley and, and the Thompson region, they deal with a lot of drought um, issues and, and water, um, water quantity issues, whereas areas like Prince George don't deal with that nearly as much. Um, Shushwap, um, they deal with a lot of water quality, same with uh, the lower Fraser down in the uh, Vancouver area. A lot of water quality issues that we need to deal with, so managing the issues um, in, a, in an integrated way can be quite difficult, and so we, um, we have to deal with sub-basins um, quite a bit. So, um, I'll just show you the guide that we've done. So this is the guide um, that we, we produced uh, two years ago, or I guess last year. And there's a few copies over there on the table, and you can have a look at it. And um, if you need a copy, just let me know, and I can um, mail you one. Um, so the purpose of the guide is to really help people build capacity to plan for their watershed, um, to help them understand the value of planning, um, the range of planning options that are available to people um, and to watersheds, and to navigate through um, the issues and uh, the legislation and the uh, there's quite a complex web of legislation that affects water in BC, um, and, and here I imagine as well in Canada. Um, and to help integrate uh, climate change into watershed planning, it's becoming a very critical issue in BC and, and across Canada. Um, so there's a number of ways that we can do that, and I'll go into that a little bit right now. Um, the guide, here's just a, um, an outline of the guide. This is just the main chapters. Um, I won't go into too much detail. So why is, why is watershed planning important? Well, we need to manage, as somebody mentioned earlier today, we need to manage the human activities as they relate to water. We don't need to manage water, but we need to manage humans as they relate to water. Um, and we, so that means allocation, use and allocation, resolving conflicts that emerge. Uh, there's a number of diverse uh, issues and, and um, pressures on our water sources. So just planning for those sorts of things and helping to, to mitigate pressures. Climate change, um, a number of climate change impacts um, on our water systems. Um, there's going to be a lot of uh, water shortages and competition for our water sources. Um, implications for, for transboundary agreements in a lot of cases across um, BC and, and the US, BC, Alberta. Um, there'll be a lot more increased turbidity um, and uh, waterborne pathogens uh, just from flooding and erosion and things like that due to climate change. Um, the hydrology and geomorphology will also quite uh, change quite a bit. Um, the volume and timing of flows, um, sediment transport, um, infrastructure um, has an increased risk of damage as well. 
So acquiring the specific knowledge and the, the regionally specific um, context for each watershed is, is quite important to integrate into those plans um, and, and tailoring each watershed plan to the specific regional conditions and context is quite important. Managing water supply and demand, there's a, so this guide profiles about 10 different types of watershed plans and so they fall into three categories and this is the first one, managing water supply and demand. And these are the, the four uh, four types of plans that can be found in there and I won't go into detail very much on those but um, water conservation plans, drought management, water use and water allocation plans. And so do we, based on climate change, based on, on the current context, do we need to be thinking about future allocation based on drought or um, water conservation? Do we need to up the target? Um, a lot of restrictions. How do we how do we manage our water based on on drought? Protecting our drinking water is another um, set of our category. Um, so there's four in here, and those are uh, well and aquifer protection plans, source water protection plans, um, our source water assessments and response plans, and drinking water protection. So all of these are profiled a lot more in detail in the guide. And then integrating water and watershed um, plans. So there's there's a few here that the flood management isn't actually in the guide, but and, and some of these are BC specific. But um, these take into account a, a lot of issues, um, land development, um, all kinds of drought, rainwater, um, wastewater, uh, a, a large number of plans, not just you know drinking water or flooding or you know, lots of different types of plans into one larger larger plan. So when we went out to uh, throughout BC we had the, a number of, um, of uh, workshops and we learned um, that we need to apply a water centric lens to watershed planning um, to consider the various um, land uses on water reserves. Um, we need to shift our thinking to, to uh, water blends from stormwater, for instance, to rainwater management and think of water as a resource and not necessarily a problem where it has been thought of one in the past. Um, so, you know, use our, use our rainwater to our advantage as opposed to um, thinking, thinking of it as a problem. And, and understand that the water the watershed is one big connected system and, and making sure that we plan for that. So the five workshops that we held, um, Prince George, 100 Mile House, Salmon Arm, Chilliwack, and New Westminster. Um, and so some of the things that we heard, um, water quality and quantity issues are, are huge in BC, um, but also a lack of data and information on our water system. So we need to get the re we need to do the research and we also need to be sharing it. Um, there's a lot of disconnect across BC, um, people in silos and uh, not sharing. So we need to bring people together to share the information that we have. Um, jurisdiction and governance um, is quite a difficulty. As I mentioned earlier, there's a complex web of, of legislation that's very difficult for people to navigate, especially in small towns where you, you, know, you don't know who does what um, and how decisions are made. So it, it can be difficult to navigate through things like that. And also, um, the perception that water is free and abundant, and it falls from the sky. We, we talked about this earlier um, about how water is taught in our classrooms, and, um, and it's a cycle, and it, it always stays in the cycle. It goes up to the sky, it falls down, and it comes, you know, it stays within the system. But that's not always the case, and it, it, it breeds the assumption that water is always there, and it always stays in the system, but it, it doesn't. And so we, we need to stop thinking about water as free and abundant and think of it as a resource that we need to conserve. So there's some opportunities that were also identified in strategies to move forward at these workshops. Um, and so collaborative decision making at the local level um, was a really big one and we're working on that at the council as well um, with collaborative watershed governance, but, but also uh, watershed management <coughs> and planning. Um, we need to educate to inspire behavior change, so um, helping people understand uh, that water is not free and abundant, um, that you know, we, we, need, we do need to conserve it. Um, there's lots of different types of water innovation or water storage innovation that we can explore and, and we need to start changing the regulations at the province, provincial level um, to allow for that sort of thing beyond just the, the large dams. 
And broadening the engagement beyond the visual suspect is also quite important. So talk to your, talk to your peers. And that's just the, the website for Rethinking Water. So you can find the guide, the online version of the guide there. Um, and all kinds of tools. And, and so this guide really is a starting place. And so if you want to de develop your watershed plan, um, if you go here and you kind of get an overview of what type of plan is the best, but then there's lots of resources to delve deeper and to figure out how to, how to get into the plan that will really work best for you. So at the provincial scale, what we're doing now is um, we're doing a number of things. We're working on a guidance document uh, for, at, well, this is a guidance document in and of itself. We're working on a collaborative watershed governance accord and an accompanying do guidance document to help uh, local watersheds develop um, collaborative watershed tables to govern their, their water resources. Um, we're looking at financial mechanisms to help make that possible as well. So these are just some of the things that we're working on. At a basin-wide scale, um, so we're working on the Fraser Salmon Watersheds Program was a six-year program that, that ended this, this April. Um, so that was a, a large stewardship funding program. But so since that, that money's dried up, we're working on um, some kind of a legacy for that. So keeping the, the large network of stewards um, together um, in some fashion through membership, through events, through um, learning events and things like that. Um, so we're trying to keep that alive. Um, and we're working on indicators and, and flooding and different things like that as well. And at the regional and local scale, we're, we're in several different waters, watersheds across BC, um, Murray Creek, Shishwap, uh, Nicola, Kalta. So we're working on different sustainability issues at the local level as well to try to build watershed tables, build collaboration, and uh, uh, get some sustainability going there.